This is what it feels like to edit a video. Nothing ever goes right, and when it does, there's always something that doesn't quite work, or the software crashes, or your dog won't stop barking, and the house is on fire. Wait, what? But hitting export and having a complete video by the end of it is all worth the pain and the suffering. So there are a few things you can do to help you get to the finish line. And if you're new to editing or just want a refresher, today we're going to go over some basic tips with editing in Final Cut Pro X. Now obviously it would take hours to go over every single feature in Final Cut, so this is just going to be a few general tips to know before you start editing. Let's do it. Now one of the most contentious arguments people make for not editing on Final Cut is the magnetic timeline. Now what the magnetic timeline actually is is pretty simple, it's just taking your clip back to the start once you drop it down into your timeline. But that's also kind of an old argument because you can turn it off and here's how to do it. Just press P and go down and set the timeline to position. Now after you've done this, if you delete the clip, the rest of the timeline will be magnetized back and it will fill that gap. But you can avoid this by pressing FN while you delete the clip and it will leave the empty space where the clip used to be. Now obviously you can edit any type of video or film with Final Cut, um, but one area that I have found that it excels in is documentaries. The clips are viewed as film strips in the event browser. Easily scrub through your clips without having to open them up in the source monitor like you would with other NLEs. This will save you a lot of time if you're editing through documentaries or just something with a ton of footage. Once you've found the right clip, uh, to set an in and out point or to figure out exactly what part of the clip you need, it's actually very simple. So once you've found the right clip, you can set your in and out points by dragging the yellow ends of the clip to fit whatever length you need. Then just drag it onto your timeline. There's also even the Ken Burns effect, which is just an image pan and zoom feature that you can apply directly to the clip. There's no keyframes or anything you need to do. Now speaking of documentaries, weddings, commercials, news packs, or vlogs, these are bound to have a lot of titles, lower thirds, uh, subtitles, and what this tool allows you to do is instantly change any misspelled or just unwanted word in general. You can fly through your edit and then make your changes once you're done with V1 of your video. So one of the coolest aspects of Final Cut is how the effects play into your workflow. Now when you're actually deciding which effect to use on a clip, just hover over the effect in the effect browser and it will automatically be applied to the clip selected on the timeline. This way you don't have to apply the effect first just to see what it actually does to the clip. Now Final Cut excels with organization. Keeping your audio clips labeled by assigning roles will help with the more complicated your edit gets. Basically using these roles is just a way to categorize all of your footage and clips uh, so that this keeps your head from exploding. And then there's the range tool. Now what this does is apply four keyframes simultaneously that allows you to lower or raise the volume of a clip. So hit the R key and lasso the part of the clip you want tweaked and it should apply the keyframes instantly. had a rough start with previous versions as they weren't really fine-tuned for really good color correcting and color grading but with recent upgrades you'll now be able to do every step of the post-production process in one place now how best you can correct and color grade your footage um, there's a complete breakdown of this that I suggest watching uh, it goes into every aspect of what you're gonna learn with color wheels and whatnot you can watch it here. But if you're in a rush and you just need to get the edit on to the first round of approvals or you want to upload to YouTube, you can tweak or set the white balance by going to color and audio enhancements menu or go to modify and then hit balance color. Now this doesn't work for every situation, but you'll be able to manually play with it by going to the video inspector and changing it from automatic to white balance. And from there on out you can tell Final Cut what part of the image to focus on. There's also a comparison view so you can look at two different clips and color grade based on the previous one or how to match them accordingly. Now let's say you're editing a commercial, wedding, whatever it may be, and you have a spot that you don't have a clip for or you need approvals, you need to communicate with whoever's approving this video, whether it be producers, or even if you're just not happy with the edit, and you know it needs a little something else. One of the most beneficial aspects of Final Cut are the extensions that it allows. 
And there's also a Shutterstock extension that allows you to kind of just throw in a clip um, right from Final Cut. You don't have to leave the program. And once you like the clip, you're happy with the edit, you can license it, and you don't even have to remove the clip or bring it back into your timeline. This is just another good way that Final Cut allows you to work closer with your clients. Okay, so this is a really obvious tip, and it's not even really a tip, it's just a fact, and that's Final Cut only runs on Mac OS. Now, I say this not because um, you don't know this or you're not thinking about the fact that you can't run Final Cut on a PC, but think about how you wanna be editing five years down the road. Maybe you're starting to get a little tired of Mac. Maybe you uh, wanna build your own PC. Um, well, before you get started on your editing journey with Final Cut, just consider this, making the switch down the road will kind of force you to change NLEs and you'll have to pick a different software. So it's just important to think about these things before you start your editing journey because uh, you don't want to get down and have to start over, you know, five years after you've already mastered Final Cut. Now remember everyone, there's so much more to talk about with Final Cut Pro. This is just a very surface level dive. If you want to dive a little bit deeper, if you want some more Final Cut content in general, drop a comment, tell us what you want to see, and we'll start working on it. And subscribe, like, hit that notification bell, and yeah, I guess that's it. See you in the next one.